Morning, Rabbi Isai. Let's continue. Before we get to the sugya of Kiddush B'mokim Suda, which is a Gavaldiga sugya, it's a sugya that's going to be very, very important. Be'ez Hashem, tomorrow we'll, we'll, we'll start that sugya. But before we get to that, there's a couple of halachas that I just want to cover, because the Kiddush B'mokim Suda, Kiddush B'mokim Suda sugya will probably be the last sugya in Kiddush, take us to the beginning of next week, somewhere along the lines of that. So we're going to discuss some of the uh, common halachas, including Yain Pogum, Kois Pogum, which we discussed already, which I want to make a little bit clearer for the Olam that we're asking. Before we get to that, yesterday we ended off with the Shaila of making Kiddush on schnapps, on whiskey, and everything else. I think it was pretty, pretty clear. If that's your minig, that's what you do. We ended up with a kash. I discussed with Robert Wittenstein what would be the din if anyone that makes Kiddush on a, um, on a little small glazer, like on a small, on a small cup that's less than a revius, and you make Kiddush on Shabbos day with our whiskey cup, the shayla is, what about a bracha choyna? Meaning, if during the week, let's say, Lama there was a yudzat of the Heilige Bnei Yisroscha, the Heilige Dinava, and uh, somebody gives you a little, a little glazer of, of whiskey, and it's a machal so the shayla is, do you make a bracha choyna on that? Yes. If the whole reason, the Chavit says yes. And if you don't, then we're back to the cash of what are you soymich on to make Kiddush on that to begin with. If the whole reason you're making Kiddush is soymich that it's considered to be a small amount, that's Cheshivas. All right, anyway, well, we left it over there, let's continue. I want to talk about for a moment, Matcha, about diluting wine and grape juice. And this is very Nagea for a few cases. Okay, David, this is very Nagea. Let's say, for example, there's only a small amount of grape juice left. And you pour it into the kois, and we all know that one of the one of the ten things that every kois has to have, Shleimala, is kois mole. It's not mole. For mole means it's full. So we said last time, if you remember, when we discussed the ten yesodas of what a kois shabocha has to have, we said it could be that you could take a Lego brick or a few Lego bricks and stick them in. Because the whole idea that it's full doesn't have to be full dafka with wine. So that was one answer. But what about diluting it? What about diluting it? You know, it's negate also by Pesach sometimes, by Dalad Koises, where to take Dalad full Koises for some people, the Gemara tells us that one of the Amorim used to have a headache from Pesach all the way to Shavuos when he drank the Dalad Koises. Adkadekach. He still did it. Ravazna brings it in Tshuva. Anyway, Al Kapodim, he still did it. But there are people that, for them, it's very, very hard to have wine or even grape juice. Sometimes people are allergic, whatever. So they want to dilute it with some liquid. What's the din? So we'll start like this, Rabbi Say. There's a Gemara in Brochus Tafnun Omen Aleph. The Gemara in Brochus tells us very simple. According to Rabbi Leza, Yain Chai, which is undiluted wine of the days of Chazal, what Brocha do you make on it? You make a Boire Periho Eitz on such a wine. Okay? According to the Chachomim, Chachomim are choylik, and they say, no, you make a goffin. Everyone agrees that when it comes to Kiddush, Eli, and it comes to Dalet Koises on the Heilige Pesach, the din is you do not make a bracha on it until Dovi, you diluted it. And the reason was, because in the times of Chazal, the wine was so concentrated, plus it almost wasn't shayach to drink in the normal way, they had to dilute it. Comes along the base Yosef already, right? The Beis Yosef says, Tully, that nowadays our wine uh, generally is not as thick and undiluted as the wine of Chazal. And therefore it's right to make Kiddush on even without diluting it. That was already the Beis Yosef. Comes along nowadays. Nowadays we for sure don't have to dilute wine or grape juice to make it drinkable, to make it normal, because it's already been diluted. Right? That's the general din in that case. Now we know that we've seen Many people that, um, that do put water into, into uh, bottles sometimes. So if you look at the Kafachaim, the Kafachaim brings the Arizal, the Kisve Arizal, Al Peter Tikunim, whatever, that we're not going into. That of course, wine is, uh, that, that wine is, is, water is chesed and wine is bina. In order to fix it up, and the, the din, we want to put drops. And the Kafachaim says three drops. That's why many of the Hasidim, if you ever saw, open up a bottle and they pour three little drops inside. That's Al Pika Bola. That's nothing to do with diluting it. I'm not getting involved in saying you should or should not. I'm just explaining to you what people do. But I'll upon him, most of our wines and grape juice are all already diluted. Ah, so if they're already diluted, there's not much you can do. In fact, when I called out Rabbi OU, so the OU told me two things. They told me, number one, they said to me that most of our wines are up to 5% water, and most grape juices are up to 33% of water. So you can imagine if a grape juice already has 33% of water, there's not much you can do with it if you haven't got much left in the bottle, right Dovi? Right. 
Gewaldig. So Lemaisa like this. I called up, I called up Kedem and I said, Rabbi Kedem, tell me what to do. Lemaisa, you buy a Kedem grape juice, you buy a Kedem bottle of wine, whatever it may be. Tully, what, how much are you allowed to dilute in that situation? Right, Davy? What are you allowed to do in Azar Matzev? What does Kedem say of the instruction manual of diluting grape juice and wine? Very Nagaya, what do you do? So Kedem told me the following. Kedem said that all wines that they're under their jurisdiction, under their supervision, you could dilute one part of wine to one part of water. That's what they told me and it's still good. Still has the chashivas, the taste, the smell, the alcohol content, whatever it is, of wine. And they said Concord grape juice, they said, I'm not familiar, the Concord grape juice, Dafgov Kedem, Weissnisch, whatever. That they said you can actually dilute two parts of water with one part of wine. Now I must tell you like this, the Chazanish held, and Chacham Ben Sinab HaShaul also in Olet Zion, the Chazanish held that you can dilute as much water you want in wine, Avi, and grape juice, as long as it still retains the Chashivas, the taste, the starkness of the wine. If you can no longer taste it being wine, that doesn't mean, told me Rafalk one time, that you could taste this once came from wine or this was the wine that was diluted. I've had that everything eventually will, you know, eventually will get lost, but even if you add a lot of water, you can taste this was wine. But it means it has the starkness, Ruvain, of the wine, right? Or of the grape juice. Says the Chazan Ish, you can dilute it as long as it's got a starker taste of grape juice, a starker taste of wine. That is good. Rabbi Shlomo Zalman was a little bit more machme. Rabbi Shlomo Zalman held you can't even dilute it. Bechlal, he says, because our grape juices are so diluted already, to dilute it more will just make it almost like water, and you shouldn't make our goffin on that. But our kapon in the chazanish would be mekel yae in that case, and would say that that would be okay if what? If it still has the taste, okay? Rabbi said this is important. Let's move on. Let's talk about something else which is also a gear. What's that? Light grape juice, so again, it depends on the content of the alcohol. The general rule is it still has the taste of the alcohol and the grape juice and the wine, then you're okay. So it's not alcohol, it's juice. So it still has the taste of the grape juice, like I said, then it's good. Right? Let's move on, Rabbi Sai. Um, let's talk about something else. Another idea to make Kiddush on. I don't know if you've ever seen, there's two bechers, I'm sure the oil are familiar. There are two bechers that have lids with them. Right? Two specific bechers that have lids with them. Now the shaila is, where did that come from? And of course, al pikabola, there's a lot more to discuss. But on a basic, normal level, what's going on? So read the Shulchan Aruch Rabbi Yisai. Simen Ayin Reish Beis. Ayin Reish Beis. Sif Aleph. Ein Mekadshin al Yain Shirei Chayra. Don't make Kiddush on wine that has a bad smell. Okay. Ava Gav the Reich of a time in Hamra. Even though the Maisa tastes very nice. Okay. Veloi al Yain Megula. Yayin Megula means what? Means revealed wine. Now all of us are familiar, right? Do we know that in Yeridea, more familiar with Yeridea, Rafal, and we know that in Yeridea, it's state Mufurish, in Yeridea, some Kufta Zayin Sibais, that if you have Yayin Megula, if you have water, or if you have anything that's Megula, there's a problem of drinking it, right? The Gemara and Beitz are famously, Toysus discusses it, that Beitz says it goes to the Shaila, whether it's Nagea nowadays, because of the snakes that may put their venom inside. We don't drink liquids that have been revealed for a long period of time. Now that is one sugya. This is a slightly different sugya. The Shulchan Aruch says, Afilo ha'idna, even nowadays, the loy kaptina na giloi, that we're not so makpid on gilo. that means nowadays we're not so makpid to make sure that every liquid that we have, if you ever saw, or if you ever buy, Hagoin Rav Chaim Kanievsky Zatzal, you, if, you, if you ever saw him drinking a tea, he drank a tea and then he put the plate back on top of the tea. Because he was makbed on giloi. He was makbed to make sure that no liquid that he would drink would be revealed for an extended period of time. Okay? That's why I have bechos with a lid on it. Now the Shulchan Aruch says that nowadays we're not makbed on giloi. We don't have to worry about it. Are you with me? So why? What, what's the problem? The problem is something else. The problem is that it's called yayin. That's not roi legabe the nisach hayayin. It's not roi le nisach hagabe mizbeach, and it comes from a pasuk of Malachi hakriveyu nolav echosecha, which means that basically anything that's not roi to go on the mizbeach raf, you should not use for kiddush raf, right? If that's the case, that wine that's been revealed for an extended period of time is going to be problematic. What is the minimum amount of time? Because this is Nagaya. Sometimes you pour the Kiddush and then you wait for the Olam to be quiet 
Or, stop until the kids come round. You, know, you have to go call everybody in. This one's upset. They got the wrong place. Whatever it is, you have to go running around, try to gather all the kids. There's a shayla, by the way, brought down in one of the gedolei achoinim. If gathering the kids on Shabbos by, to go for the kiddush, it's a shayla of ma'amar. It's a shayla of gathering or not, if you're allowed to do that. It's a shayla brought down. But I'll upon him. What's that? Taking it too far. Okay, Moti said that's taking it too far. Okay, fine. Yeah, it's bringing up a few memories, I see. Okay, Rabbi Isai, let's move on. That very good. I said there are two vision, it's also. Very good. Uh, what's that? Hatmana? No, Hatmana means to wrap it around after it's already been covered. Shine and Reish and Zayn. Rabbi Isai, let's move on. Okay, Ellie, you with me? So therefore, if you have a wine or grape juice, and you've left it out for an extended period of time, that is a problem and you cannot make Kiddush on that anymore. So what is the Shah Mu'etes? What does it mean? So the post can say, uh, uh, up until 20 minutes, it's for sure okay. Over 20 minutes, then it's going to be problematic. Okay? Nowadays, the post can say, since our wines and grape juices are not really that expensive, then a person should be trying to be makbid to make sure that it's not revealed for any time whatsoever. And on Seder night, Shlomo Zalman has a whole mahalach to say that on Leila Seder, when sometimes you can, you know, the, you know, the art school says Mufurish, pour wine now. It's one of the only times, by the way, that men listen to instructions. Men don't like ever listening to instructions. This is the only time that men listen to every instruction in the instruction manual. The art school says, pick up the wine. Okay, we pick up the wine. Art school says, cover the matzahs. Cover the matzahs. So the art school says, cut, pour the cup, pour the next coast. So we pour it, and then sometimes the oil can knack, right, Shimon? For hours, we can for bring, and it's moedic, right? It's mamish, it's mamish, kirvis alekim, it's kavaldi. Oh, but, the, but, but the kiddush is standing over there. So the answer to Shlomo Zalman is that anything that's in front of you and you're oisik in it, which is what you are, because you're saying the Haggadah al hakois, and therefore we're not worried about that. Rabbi say one last sugya for today is called the Kois Pogum sugya. Right? Some of the oil are handling, last time we mentioned it, what's with Kois Pogum exactly, Raf? What does it mean in that case that you have a Kois Pogum? Okay? So the answer is like this. I want to make this very, very clear because the only have to understand what is Kois Pogum, what makes Kois Pogum, and how to fix it up. Also something very, very important. The din is like this. Once somebody has drunk from a Kois, the din is that the rest of that Kois is Kois Pogum. What does that mean? That means you can no longer make Kiddush from that, Davy. right? Can't make Kiddush from it. Not only can you not make Kiddush from it, it could be that you can't even pour some grape juice into the cup to fill it up, which is what people do, and make Kiddush from it. Now you'll see people do this. They go to a Kiddush, somebody made Kiddush, had a few sips, whatever it is, hopefully a male lugmov, and left the kois there. So I'll make Kiddush. Obviously I'm not going to make Kiddush on a half a kois, right? So I take the, take the grape juice, I take the wine, and I fill it up. It's a, it's a problem. It was a kois pogum. If it's a kois pogum, I can make Kiddush on a kois pogum. Zachary, are you with me? Gavaldi. Ah. Beautiful. So the question is like this. First of all, what makes a Kois Pogum? And what does not make a Kois Pogum? Okay? Those of you that have noticed, I wonder how many people, because the Gemara says in Cholim Mulsi Delay Ramid the Inish Lava Daiti, if you're not thinking about it, you don't chap in Nasameya. How many people chap when someone's Masadi Kedushin and they're holding the Kois? I'm not getting involved if you do or don't have to do this, by the way, but I'm just talking about whether or not you've seen this. That the one that's making the Sadiq Kedushin, so he makes the Brocha Bo Pregofen, first Brocha of Sidi Kedushin, he makes Bo Pregofen, and then he makes the other Brocha, and then he gives it over to the Chosen, the Chosen, the Kaldor, the Gansa Maisa, the Shviga, it's Moedic, right? So you see sometimes that the Masadi Kedushin, I saw that by Rav Scheinberg, but he'll spill it into his hand, he'll give the Kaisen, and now, I'm not getting involved why he does that, because he made that goff and he wants to be nana from it. I'm not getting involved to say whether you need to do that, you don't need to do that, I have no idea, I don't know. But all I'm telling you is that he does that, one of the reasons he does that is because of Kois Pogum. Meaning, that if he drinks from it, he doesn't want the chassan to drink from a Kois Pogum. It's Kois Shabracha, right? Making a goff on it. Mimela, he put that one of the reasons is, spills it into his hand, and drinks his hand. That, that does not make Kois Pogum. Now, I'm not suggesting that when you make it, I'll be in big trouble. Um, if you may, if the next time you make Kiddush, that you spill it into your hand, you're not going to get a mole lugmov into your hand either, and start sipping it up that way to make sure you don't get a Kois Pogum. Zarya, you with me? Right? We're not going to say that someone should do that. Right? But, if you do that, theoretically, that does not make Kois Pogum. The other example is, if you taste it with your, with your finger. Right? This is very Negea when it comes to what? Leila Seda. When you use your finger, this finger, this finger, I have no idea. I'm not getting into this right now, maybe before Pesach. That does not make Kois Pogum. But if you drink from the Kois Tully, even with a straw, 
That will be Kos Pogum. Once it's Kos Pogum, the din is no one is allowed to drink from, you should not drink from a Kos Pogum. By the way, drinking from a bottle makes the whole bottle into a Kos Pogum. So if you drink from a bottle, if you made Kiddush on a bottle, theoretically, and you drank from the bottle, the whole thing is now Pogum, right? Which means that it's a problem of people making Kiddush with the Ayin Pogum. Bidhi ever, the Kiddush would work, but it's a bidhi ever. And you see so many people doing this. They go to a Kiddush, they fill up grape juice, oh, they make Kiddush. It's a bidhi ever. It's a Kos Pogum. They don't know what they're doing. It's a big problem. So what are you meant to do, Lemaisa? How do you fix it up? So he said last time, if you remember, the Shatzian says this, that if everyone drinks from the Kos Bracha, that's a Kos Pogum, then it's okay. So, for example, if you're making Kiddush and you're drinking and then you're giving to him to drink on the, the rest of the Mishpacha, then there's no problem of drinking from it because from, they're drinking from the Kosh Bracha and then it's okay. To make Kiddush from it, that would be problematic. But to drink from it is a problem. Or to drink from it and then pour out into Kosh's, that's Kosh Pogum. You're giving everyone Kosh Pogum. So what are you meant to do? So, Abayi said, listen carefully. We have a Machlokas Roshonim which the Chovetz Chaim says we Paskin like both. Okay? And the answer, again, Rabbi said, this separates the men from the boys. Let's see Lemaisa, who knows halacha. When you look around people making Kiddush, you'll see big Amaratzim out there. Nebuch, I feel bad for them. They didn't listen to the Sheh, they never opened up a Shulchan Aruch. Emma and Achanami. Mr. Burr says there are two Mahalchim. It goes boss to two Rishonim. Okay? The first is the Rosh. The Rosh says that if you take a drop of non pogum wine and you put it in, one drop, Zuk the Rosh, no longer Kos Pogum. So take a little bit of grape juice from the bottle, one drop, you pour it into the Kos, it's no longer Kos Pogum. Comes along the Marambi Rutenberg, and the Marambi Rutenberg says, he's Cholik on the Rosh, and he says no, because that little drop that you pour in is bottle. And if it's bottle, then as we know, whether it's Shishim or not Shishim, we're not going into, but it's bottle. Kama Kama bottle. Which means that now when you take a little bit of grape juice and pour it into that, it's bottle. It doesn't work. So what do you have to do? Zuk the Marami Rutenberg. You take the Koshal Brocha, which is half full. You pour it into the bottle that has more than it, more than the Koshal that it comes from. And now you can do whatever you want. Now you start again, so to speak. You start the process. Says the Heilige Chofetz Chaim, right? Kuf Bay Base. Look this up. Sikotun Chof Zayin. We do both. We do both. What do we do? Is we take the wine bottle and we pour it a little bit into the kois, a drop, to be eight to the rosh. And then the Marami Rutenberg, we pour it back into the bottle. If the bottle has more than that, now I can start again. So you come to a kiddish and there's half a kois there. You take that half a kois, right? You pour from the bottle into it. You pour that back into the, into the bottle. If the bottle has more than it, obviously, because then obviously it's not going to work. And according to the Chavetz Chaim, that will be the most lachatchela to do in that case. And when making kiddish, either give out the kois that you're actually using to everyone else, or before you drink from it, Pour it out to everyone else before drinking from it in that case. In Mitzvah Shem, tomorrow, we're going to start the sugya of Kiddush, but more comes to the...